Good afternoon and welcome to Emerald KCC webinar today. This is Nadine Wadzia. I'm the Regional Marketing Manager for Emerald Publishing for the MENA region. I will be, I'm happy to be moderating this session today, along with on this call also, there is uh, joining us is Inji, Inji Magdi from the American University in Cairo. Inji is the director, a director of the Hazendar Research Center, uh, Business Research and Case Center. Um, she would be moderating the session along with me. Welcome everyone, and I hope you enjoy this session. First, I'm going to be sharing some instruction for a good experience. So um, uh, look at the right panel on the side, the orange arrow opens and closes your control panel. Uh, you can change the audio option to computer or phone at any time. All attendees microphones are muted. However, uh, please feel free to, to post your questions during the time of the presentation and we'll be answering them at that. Also, the, the presentation will be recorded and will be shared on our social media and the uh, AUC social media as well. So stay tuned for that. First, let me share the agenda of today's webinar. We will start by welcoming, uh, we're giving a welcome note and introduction by both Emerald and the Hazendar Case Center. Um, then we will be announcing the winners of the competition. For this will be followed by the reflection on the winning cases by the winners. Then it will be time for our presentation by Dr. Virginia Budalika. And it will be time then for your questions. So uh, first, Dr. Rami Hassanin, he's the regional manager for the Middle East and North Africa from Emerald Publishing. Hello, Dr. Rami. Hi, and thanks, Nadine. Um, uh, for everyone who didn't meet me before, my name is Rami Hassanin. I'm the regional manager and vice president for the Middle East and Africa. Um, many thanks to Professor Virginia and Professor Samer for allowing me to join their panel today. Uh, actually, I'm very proud, not only because I'm representing Emerald, but because today we are rewarding uh, a success coming from our part of the world, uh, a success from the Arab schoolers. Uh, uh, in building uh, successful case studies. Emerald as a company was uh, born 55 years ago. It was born by a group of uh, schoolers as well, a group of researchers and professors from uh, Bradford University. And their mission at that time, their aim was to disseminate knowledge to the world, to disseminate uh, the scientific research uh, uh, findings to the world and trying to translate it to real benefit uh, for the people. And today, uh, we still have the same aim and same mission, uh, but more modern with the uh, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Our mission today is to commission and showcase research that can make a real impact and help in developing uh, a better world for everyone. Uh, we work with thousands of universities, and uh, especially in our part of the world, and corporates and public institutions, and uh, trying to provoke kind of debate that leads to positive change. Uh, sincere congratulations to the winners today, and I hope we will have more in the future. And thanks and my best wishes for you all. Thank you very much. Uh, now it's time for, Dr. for Professor Samer Atalla. Professor Samer is the Associate Dean for the Graduate and Research uh, of, of, for the Graduate Studies. Um, I'm sorry for... Associate Dean for Graduate Studies and Research at the AUC School of Business. He is also the Associate Professor of Economics. Hello, Dr. Samer. Hello, Nadine. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rami, for taking the time to join us uh, today in this very important event. Uh, and thank you, uh, Dr. Virginia, uh, for joining us today. Uh, I'm very pleased to be invited and to introduce this event. Um, I'm here representing uh, the AUC School of, AUC School of Business. Uh, we take very uh, strong pride uh, in uh, our vision, which is being uh, the knowledge hub um, uh, of the Arab region um, and uh, uh, reflecting the Arab region to the rest of the world and achieving a global influence uh, based on the knowledge that we produce, whether uh, this knowledge is uh, pedagogical knowledge or research knowledge, um, or uh, as in today, um, uh, related to uh, production of case studies. 
part and parcel of the School of Business um, is obviously uh, the Khazandar uh, Business Research and Case Center, uh, which is the only um, university-based uh, case center in the region. Uh, it is uh, now 12 years, 13 years old, um, and uh, it does not only serve the AUC community and its faculty, but its, uh, its service goes beyond uh, Egypt uh, and uh, reaches out to the whole region. Um, and basically, the collaboration with Emerald today uh, is one of the activities that where uh, the reach of the KCC and the School of Business goes beyond uh, Cairo, goes beyond Egypt, and uh, is uh, throughout the region. Um, I'm very delighted also that um, in these very challenging times that we are all going through, uh, we were able to launch the, this uh, case competition um, uh, last year and this year uh, with a very positive feedback. Um, and um, it's really uh, impressive that we have received submissions from all over the region. We have uh, submissions from Egypt, from Lebanon, from Morocco, from Saudi Arabia, um, and from the United Arab Emirates. And they're not really uh, business uh, case studies that are related to one area of business, but they go beyond uh, the different uh, research areas within uh, business, such as marketing, management, operations, finance, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, international business, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm very happy that uh, I'm here today. I look forward to this announcement. Again, I welcome you all at the AUC School of Business and the KCC. Uh, thank you so much, and back to you, Nadine. Thank you, Professor Samer. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm going to introduce now Dr. Virginia Budalika. She is our speaker and presenter for today. We're very happy and honored to have you here, Dr. Virginia. Dr. Virginia Budalika is the SETI Hori Chair of Leadership Studies and a professor in the School of Business Administration at the American University of Charja in UAE. She teaches in the areas of strategic management and leadership, change and innovation, corporate governance, and family business. She has over 100 scholarly published publications. Dr. Virginia is a passionate academic and an advocate of cross-disciplinary research and practice. Hello, Dr. Virginia, and welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Nadine, for the introduction. Uh, here I go. I excuse myself for some technical issues on my side. Uh, you cannot see me, but you can see the picture, and I think <laughs> That is going to be enough. The most important, I can see you all. Uh, it's my privilege to be here. I thank everyone from the Emerald side and definitely from KCC uh, Center of Case Studies and uh, American University of Cairo uh, for joining, for organizing this amazing and outstanding webinar on case writing, and particularly on our beloved region, uh, Middle East. Uh, yes, I'm based at the American University of Sharjah, so we know it's kind of partner University 2 of uh, American University of Cairo, so we are more or less from the same uh, network. I do lead the Saeed Tihuri Chair of Leadership Studies at the American University of Sharjah in uh, the School of Business Administration at AUS. I've been in the region for about 15 years now. I do love the uh, vibrant nature of the region. And despite the fact that we are all living in a very dynamic environment and in also uh, in a very challenging environment, and this affects every single country on earth, uh, we do see that the region, MENA in particular, is changing very much and there are so many transformations going on. So the region has huge potential and a lot of things to deliver. And we are so proud that Emerald, together in partnership with American University of Cairo, uh, took the initiative to organize this case writing competition. Uh, so I'm really happy to be invited to also deliver a short speech about uh, the characteristics and the features of a winning case study. So welcome to this webinar. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, and, and now Dr. Virginia is going to be announcing to us today the winners of the case competition. Um, so we're very happy to have them all here and we congratulate them all on behalf of both Emerald and KCC. Thank you so much. And the floor is now yours again, Dr. Virginia. Thank you so much, Nadine. 
So um, as we had the introduction, I think uh, Dr. Ashraf uh, said uh, about their um, submissions that we got. So we got um, quite a good number of submissions uh, this year. It's the first time that we organized this uh, uh, webinar in association uh, with Emerald and the uh, uh, Autism Dark Business Research and Case Center, so KCC. And uh, we had uh, a nice choice of cases to select from. And uh, we are really proud to see that out of all those submissions, we could select top three cases, which are, uh, are we going, Nadine? This is second. Uh, do we oh, start sorry. from the third or from the first? <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, that's so the first. Sorry, the, the, the slides just went one yeah, way. Exactly. <laughs> Very good. So we had a, a nice deliberation. We had a variety of cases on so many different aspects uh, across uh, a variety of uh, business disciplines. And uh, it's nice that we actually had the top three cases which are tackling, and it was just an accident, it wasn't on purpose. We selected the cases based definitely on the criteria, which are very clear criteria of successful business cases that I will discuss about. And you will see that three cases uh, are quite different and at the same time they really showcase the diversity the richness the whole potential that this beautiful mina region presents so without further delay i'm really really proud and so honored to introduce the first really have a winners of the emerald in coordination and cooperation with kcc from american university of cairo competition on case writing and the first place and the winner of the competition are three amazing scholars. I guess they're all from three different universities. So yes, three, uh, no, two different universities. And the winning case is titled Standing on a Precipice, a case study of Miva Naturals. And the, the authors are Mohamed Rishad Faridi, from Prince Satan bin Abdulaziz University College of Business Administration from Saudi Arabia, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Saudi Arabia. We have second author on this winning case, Ashta Banot uh, from Prince Noura bin Abdulrahman University, also from Saudi Arabia, from the kingdom. And the third author on this winning case is Mohammed Noshad from Prince Satan bin Abdulaziz University College of Business. We are really happy about that. As you see, you're the winner of this first case writing competition uh, in the MENA region, KCC, KCC together with Emerald, and you get a nice, very beautiful award of $1,500, right? It's American dollars. That's the prize award. And yes. uh, you will get also an, uh, yes, right, it's uh, in dollars, and you'll get a nice certificate which will recognize forever your achievement. I will have really, really huge congratulations for this achievement. We are proud of this achievement and wishing you all the best. Here we virtually have clubs. <laughs> Bravo, congratulations. I hope that, uh, and I'm sure uh, all my colleagues together, yes, Nadine is clapping and all, all the colleagues and all the people who know you in your universities and abroad also congratulate you with that. Our deepest and sincerest congratulations. We are ready to move to the second yes. place in this competition. Okay. I do have also, okay, second place in this competition goes to the case study titled, and I'm very proud and you will know why, because those are authors which are hosted and are based in the American University of Cairo, and the case is titled, The New Era Brothers for Trade, the Problematic Evolution of a Family Business Within Several Industries. And there are several authors on this amazing case study, which won the second place in this competition. So Ashraf Sheta, Wajih Shukrala, Zeina El Kawas, Shirin Shata, Mariam El Khati, Reem Abdelal, and Mariam Abdul Saud. Sincerest congratulations, all those authors on this second winning a case study in this competition are based 
in American University in Cairo, right? So I guess uh, uh, that create an amazing team uh, who wrote this case study on a um, family business and even based in, 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 in Egypt. So Sanciris, congratulations, all the best. And we Thank hope you. this is not only the first, many more to come. Thank you. Virtual club. <laughs> Virtual clubs. Thanks a lot. And you get obviously a certificate of recognition and you will get also a, a prize money award worth $500, which will be transferred and organized by Emerald for sure. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. And <laughs> all the best. <laughs> and we will have now, we are ready Nadine, to move to the third place to announce the third place in this competition. Where, thank you so much. So it is projected now. So the third place goes to the case study titled Raise Your Mental Health for a Transformed Mindset, a case study of Rahaf Kobesi. So this is a case study which was co written by three authors. And then you would recognize the author from the first case. Again, we have a second one, a third place won by Mohammed Rishad Faridi from Prince Satam Thank bin you. Abdulaziz University College of Business Administration. Uh, thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank so you, you got Thank two you very much. in the same it. show. And that's beautiful because it's double effort, definitely. We have Rahaf Rayef Kobesi second author from Raise Your Mental Health um, Company, which is actually the topic of the, of, the, of the case study itself. And we do have Rihan Ivat from Jazan University. I hope I, I read that correctly, Jazan University. And congratulations, I do see, uh, I do see, right, Rahaf there. <laughs> so I can put a, a Case behind the very interesting story in that case. Sincerely congratulate you for that effort that you co-authored together with Dr. Mohammed and then Jazan. And uh, this is a really prestigious win. A sincere congratulations. You will get a certificate and a nice, really nice award of 250 American dollars. It's a very nice story, and I really encourage everyone to read. Uh, the cases. Let's first have a virtual clap <laughs> to the third place in this amazing competition. Thank you very much for making that competition really challenging, interesting. All three cases deserve their places and they showcase the richness and diversity of this beautiful region. Thank you so much. Congratulations to all of you together. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to all the winners and thank you so much for your submissions and for your great work. Thank you very much. Now we would we would love to have to and we were very happy to have you um, give a small reflection on the winning cases and um, and just tell us how how you can reflect on these. So we're and also can I please ask all the winners of each of um, case by case? So can I ask please the winners of the, of the first prize to switch on their cameras while they're reflecting on the case? So uh, Dr. Mohammed, welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, sorry. Now, now, uh, now, please, uh, please go ahead and, let, and sh share with us the reflection on your case, please. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I, uh, I am truly honored for the American University of Cairo, KCC, uh, the Business Research and Case Center, and Emerald Publishing for giving us this opportunity. And uh, this case means a lot to us, especially during the time when we had this lockdowns. So since we have very less uh, time, so uh, this uh, the title talks about the recipe where the startups usually um, uh, always having uh, issues about resources crunch. They have uh, they, they lack professionalism. Uh, they lack uh, marketing, uh, supply chain. Uh, all these factors. So in my case study, I reflected on, uh, even though it was a lockdown, 
uh, but the uh, the level of acceleration by the staff was uh, startup was in very good uh, momentum and a triggering point for that time the reason was because the startup had a very less uh, fixed cost expenses they were more responsive and they were more flexible of uh, uh, moving and shifting and modeling the business models as when it required so this case reflects that that it's inside out thinking in uh, the, uh, the case study of Miwa Naturals. Miwa Naturals is not a very, uh, uh, like an old organization, it's 2018 uh, founded organization by a young 27 years old entrepreneur uh, with the name Mitty Jane. And uh, they are into cosmetics and uh, natural products. Uh, there has been a shift in the change in the disposable income of the people in, in India. This uh, case is from the A itself. The skincare and the ur rapid ur urbanization population uh, growth rate is high. So the um, compound annual growth rate was around 10 to 11 percent. So it was an, a good opportunity for the industry to grow. Uh, but the dilemma is what uh, I like to uh, tell in quickly is that uh, uh, Mima Natural, as any other organization, was powerless. Like, but um, uh, they had that um, uh, oxygen with them, and they had that vision of being taking the advantage of that startup to be more responsive compared to the large or middle organizations. So th that is what the, my case talks about, and and I'm, uh, my case study talks about for the learners that when you get a pivot to it. So it is not startups to just wait and watch what is happening, but they has to be accelerating and being the actors into the things. Usually in the in the business world, startups usually watch what the middle middle size and large corporates are doing. But here, I want to reflect on in doing the paralysis and lockdown. It's it, they are the actually the actors and they are the people who are creating that movie and entertainment. So this is what I want to tell the learners and entrepreneurs that this is an opportunity for them to be highly responsible. Uh, Miwa Naturals had the opportunity to reposition themselves and the bargaining power of the supply was very high. So how they could uh, make as, as a strategic partnership with the suppliers and how to, they can rebuild the model. So uh, that is the thing. The learning outcome which I uh, look for is for the learners is that uh, uh, to select and review relationship uh, where, where they sh uh, the startup should be very good navigating which relationship can be stronger, which can be um, strategic and which can, can be short term or long term. And then uh, assessing the winning strategies or the bargaining power of a supplier because the supplier is few and uh, how you can make a winning strategic alliance with these suppliers who were with a few because of they were giving raw materials of the cosmetics and the third is to analyze the digital marketing hybrid of online and offline the brick and mortar stores but how the startups can take the opportunities of becoming online and bring that hybrid model so that's for my side thank you very much thank you so much dr mohammed rishad faridi and congratulations once again thank you very much thank you i appreciate now, that now we're going to move to Dr. Ashraf Sheta for the second prize. Hello, Dr. Ashraf, and congratulations to you and to all the winners on this case. Please share with us your reflection on the winning case. Thank you. And, I, and please, can you, can you also put on your, your video cam? That would be great. Okay, how are you? I think uh, this is uh, one of the uh, moments that I will remember in my life that I won this uh, uh, case study along with my students who have been uh, a part of the family business course uh, on uh, the spring of 2020. And they have done a great effort and I want to recognize them because this is the second time the AUC has won uh, 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 a competition within the family business discipline. This is the area where we are usually or we have been uh, specialized. And I want to uh, share some sort of an experience. It's a beauty to write cases along with students. And, uh, and as you can see, I salute all of them. They have been a great, great partners in writing this case. And this is not the first time Maybe this is the 13th case that we have been writing 
in the family business discipline. Uh, to to uh, to straighten up things, I want to share with you the main topics that were discussed within this case was the family business, the governance, the succession, uh, uh, the professionalism, and so on and so forth. All of the things related to family businesses. The idea or the learning objectives for uh, this case was mainly about how to resolve family conflicts within a, a very complex situation. Mainly, uh, uh, this case study uh, is about several businesses within a family business, and it is addressing the second and the third generation uh, uh, problematic areas where they join the family business. In fact, our main uh, our main source of uh, of information within this case was Wagi Shukralla, who acted uh, uh, as a primary source of information for this case. And uh, one of the issues that was were was also discussed within the case or the learning objectives is also about understanding uh, the impact of the external environment on family businesses in Egypt. And one of the issues that were also discussed for understanding within the learning objectives was also to understand the impact of ownership challenges and professionalism challenges on family businesses in Egypt. The good things about producing such cases in family businesses in Egypt in particular is that it's a new thing that is filling some sort of a gap that has been there. And these are real life cases. It's not fiction. In fact, we use these guys' names for taking into con to take into consideration any sensitivities. And uh, last but but not least, uh, and I want to repeat my thanks to my students who have been participating in this case. And I think it this will not be the last prize. In fact, this this is the second prize we won together, and there will be uh, a lot of things to come. We have produced within the family business course up to now 13 long cases. Uh, uh, 10 of them were published. And this case, I hope it will be published soon. I've uh, we have done uh, two revisions up to now, and I hope it will be published soon within Emerald uh, Emerging Markets case studies. Thank you. And uh, thank you for all our partners, uh, the KCC and Emerald and for all our partners from all, all around the world. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf, so much. And congratulations to you and to all the great students for this work. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move to the third case. And we and I invite Dr. Mohammed Faridi again to uh, to give the reflection on the third winning case and congratulations on this case as well. Dr. Mohammed. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, you're on mute, so just a second, let me try to unmute you. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, this case uh, is, uh, uh, this case has brought a lot of uh, energy in us during this lockdown time. We had an opportunity to introduce half Rahev Kobirsi. She's a protagonist actually. And uh, she has a big storyline, and we uh, she has a busy busy schedule, and we had taken a lot of time to get uh, crafting the whole case study. And um, uh, she's uh, a 33 years old, based in Dubai, and she had that transformation from a turbulent life childhood where she had a lot of uh, uh, conflicts, a lot of unfavorable situations, circumstances. She was being stricken with naturally and unnaturally. A family uh, devast uh, was pretty devastated, was broken, and uh, she bounced back in that uh, working environment uh, in a in a home in uh, Lebanon, and she moved herself uh, with the persuasion of uh, of of her goal to do something great. Uh, she never stopped learning, and she went formally did her business, and after the business, uh, she she came opportunities and she worked in certain uh, uh, organizations on certain positions 
but uh, she had uh, because of her reflection of her uh, childhood she she was a, a little bit um, uh, not in, uh, in a normal way because she was quite depressed and she, she needed someone to uh, bump her up and th that's where the triggering point of the case study begins and she she uh, she was being satisfied by one of the uh, company because she was feeling depressed she was not mentally uh, uh, like sound and uh, that was a triggering point for her to open her uh, her own startup with the name called Raise Your Mental Health. And uh, uh, she has, uh, uh, we have written a verbatim about her story, uh, Lifeline. It's it's very, it's it's a very good story for the learners and for entrepreneurs and for any walks of life to know like what mental health is. And she, her focus is more on the men mental health, which has been quite neglected in today's world. So the dilemma was how, uh, she could bounce back uh, and that bounce back or the self bounce back you know usually uh, people can bounce back with that integrated surrounding approach but how she individually uh, took that uh, pivot of bouncing back and that's where uh, the learners will really uh, get a lot of insights about this case study um, uh, as she mentioned which i'm just uh, taking from her verbatim's highest level of clinical depression with suicidal tendencies and finding the right path and a purpose to her life and these were some of these very powerful and very emotional uh, words of a verbatim mentioned in our case study uh, we have a dilemma about the competition versus compassion like how the startups are able to balance these two things uh, then uh, the, uh, the dilemma of mind your business versus mindfulness so uh, how mindfulness uh, is triumphs over the mind your business because my, your business uh, looking from the uh, profit purpose to mindfulness from the passion purpose. So that's what we have talked in the case study. We talked about the uh, counseling by Rahaf on the deductive counseling versus the inductive counseling. Uh, inductive counseling more empowering and um, uh, making uh, a thought process, customizing the problems of mental um, health uh, clients, especially the men's. So that's the dilemma there. And um, uh, she was the harbinger of mental health literacy uh, how she uh, brought the turn from the upside to downside her pivot was men matters which is more important she focused on us on her uh, this clinic and uh, she has that work on mind your health shift your mindset heal your emotional triggers raise your mental health uh, these are things uh, um, i wish and also speak some few words I, i'm so honored to have a protagonist in my case that you have you, you can speak a few words if you want Thank you, Dr. Muhammad, and thank you, Nadine, and thank you, Emerald. Um, I just got a few seconds to cry my gratitude tears. Um, when Dr. Muhammad came to me and reached out to be to be part of this case study, I was hesitant at the beginning. But then I thought that if I do not share this story, then who will? Um, I truly believe that every every incident and every situation in our life whether it was bad or good there's something for us and that the universe has brought it has brought it our way for a reason um now today i would be honored to say that the best thing that has ever happened to me was that dying by suicide because it gave me a purpose and it gave me a mission and it brought me here to helping men be open about their mental health and helping women as well to deal with their struggles when it comes to the pressure that they uh, get from the society or from their families and how to become more successful and more in peace inside out so i'm really honored to to um that I received this award. This means a lot to me, and um, thank you, thank you for 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 giving mental health the attention that it really, really uh, needs in this era. Um, here's for a better mental health inside out, and I truly believe this is only the beginning. So, thank you. Uh, in Thank one minute, so I like to talk about the learning outcomes. We uh, uh, wanted to summarize the challenges and demonstrate the mindful entrepreneurship leadership. Uh, then identifying the coping strategies for uh, for commercial compassionate uh, appeal. So the oxymoron of uh, commercial and compassion appeal. 
uh, was to establish a, a roadmap for a healthy, sustainable business model. So I'm sure the learners and the startups will uh, really uh, find not the uh, linear impact of this case study, but the exponential impact of the case study. Last but not the least, thank you so much, uh, ML Publishers, KCC, and uh, the reviewers, and uh, Ms. Nandini, and all my authors from the first uh, case study and the third case study for being with me all the time. And it was it, uh, because of them, this case study would have never been possible. Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad, and thank you, Mr. Haf, so much. And please extend our thanks and congratulations to Dr. Raitan as well. That's a lovely case, and uh, the topic is really very interesting. Thank you very much, and hope to see more even cases from, from all of you again. Thank you. So um, now I have one and more also, announcement. Thank you to Professor Virginia also. Virginia also. Yes. Thanks. OK, and now I have one very important announcement uh, to make before we start, uh, this, before we, uh, Dr. Virginia starts her presentation with us today. Um, we are uh, coming soon is, is another competition by Emerald and El Khazandar Business Research and Case Center competition for 2021. So this would be coming up very, very soon. So please stay tuned for it. And we're hoping to see even much more cases and more, even more, more, more and more topics and more cases and winners uh, next year, inshallah. Okay. And now, uh, Dr. Virginia, please, the floor is all yours. We're looking so much forward to listen to the presentation on the features of a winning case study so that we can have more and more cases next year. Just a second, I just need to. Thank you so much, Nadine. Um... So do you yes. enable me just a second to see my slides? Yes, please. Can Show you please share screen. your slides now? Yes, I think if I put there, you should see the entire screen, right? Kindly can confirm see. if you see the entire screen. Yes, perfect. So thank you so very much again for all those beautiful case studies you could witness very well and very much through the nice presentations of the three winning groups how diverse the cases are and you've seen the first one startup case with marketing emphasis the second one family business with a lot of richness of dynamics in terms of governance ownership succession management and then what to say it's like the cherry on the top uh, we all know the challenges the mental struggles that we are all going through during this pandemic and you see the third case which is actually opening up about all those challenges and dilemma of psychological nature that many of us are very shy to talk about and it is particularly relevant for this region of the world because here psychology mental wealth well-being from inside out exactly like Rahaf said is something which is not tackled as yet to that extent like it is in other region of the world so I'll come back. It is on purpose that I am uh, reiterating what uh, the presenters have said, because I'll come back on that uh, when I am going to cover some of the features of a winning case study. So um, I am going to uh, present some of my reflection based on my own experience, definitely, um, writing case studies. I am associated with Emeralds in several years because I'm associate editor on the um, Emerald Emerging Markets case study collection, uh, where we are looking forward to all those submissions and to go through all the process of uh, peer review. Uh, it is very important to mention that uh, winning the case study competition is amazing, but we need to recognize that there is a difference between winning a competition um, out of a set of cases that were submitted and then going through the entire different process of publishing the case. So be a bit reviewers when you submit the case for publishing because it is quite a different process and it takes you to confront and to overcome successfully with very important editorial guidance 
to overcome all those challenges because it's a completely different world of challenges that you face. Remember that publishing, it means that it's a set of knowledge that you create, you contribute not only to your peers, to the learners or students, how you call uh, in different universities around the world. So you contribute to setting that knowledge about the region, in particular, given the nature of the competition, but you also to contribute to all people around the world who want to know more about this beautiful region, who create specific type of mindset about what this region is all about. And they are, when they are reading those cases, they are really making a completely different um, impression about what the region is all about. So it's very important, uh, the knowledge base, that those cases that you are all writing on the region um, uh, are contributing to building this knowledge base and are contributing to the knowledge that is being created, uh, not only in the MENA, but even for all the people, all the scholars and learners and students uh, across the world. So, uh, to start, I always love to start this kind of making a small preamble about, and it's uh, a nice opportunity for me to reflect on, um, on this case writing competition, but through the lens of the experience that I had myself, and empathize with, with you, a lot of you who are writing case studies and who are in academic career. We've seen a lot of nice partnerships uh, here. And by the way, I would reflect on that also as I am sharing with you the tips of a winning case study so that you're going to see that even what the presenters, the three winning case study presenters said is part of why their cases were the winning cases, right? So some of those pr uh, presentations that were, or elements of the presentations that were shared right now, uh, the uh, judging committee was not aware of because it's something it's hidden behind the process of production of the case. But I'm really pleased to see through the presentation that actually this confirms even more why the three winning cases are the winning ones. And they really and truly deserve those spots, the three winning spots in the competition. So if we reflect, uh, reflect, and I would like to take this preamble a little bit to reflect on why cases are important, why writing the cases, and what's the linkage between us, particularly us who are academics, right, who are having to pursue academic career and the writing cases. And there are a lot of questions, and I'm sure many of you who are out there will empathize with me and will think and will ask the question, why writing cases at all, right? So we are academics, we do have a lot uh, to write about, and we have a lot of scientific articles to write. So how would I benefit from writing cases and how would it benefit eventually my career? Um, another thing, and you have to bear that in mind very much when you write a case study um, and uh, you participate in competition and then you submit it for publication because it's the ultimate purpose to have it published so that all people can use it, is, isn't it too demanding? Because there is a stereotype sometimes that actually it's easy to write case studies and there are some people who do have this stereotype. And then when they end up really sitting and writing it, they realize that actually there is a double challenge and double effort. You have to write two documents and here it is. Only one of them is published. And the second one, which is not published, is more important than the first one, which is published indeed. So you say the case and the teaching note where the note itself is double or triple in size than the case itself. So tell me, isn't it more challenging than actually the typical writing of research papers? Because in many, and this is the challenge that we have as academics in many universities around the world, is that we are research oriented and where we get only some credit for publishing academic or scholarly articles, but not really teaching case studies. And this is a valid question that we all as academics do ask. Would I get any uh, credit for that in research or teaching when I am evaluated, when I'm going for promotion, when I'm getting some specific position and offers, will they consider all my publication, all my uh, awards that I got through competition case writing? Uh, when it is more beneficial for me uh, as an academic to write a case study at the beginning, in the middle, at the end of my career? And will I really get any promotion in that? And what are those case journals indexed? 
And the good news that right away, maybe some of you are not aware, but I'm really pleased to, to say that, that uh, Emerald Emerging Markets Case Study Collection is a journal which is fully indexed in Scopus. And we know that many of the university, actually most of the university across, across the world, and particularly in the MENA region, um, uh, the professors are getting credit for publishing in Scopus index journals. So be it a research paper or be it a case study. So you get the same credit for that. So this is a very good news. So to answer those questions a little bit and to re-encourage you to really emphasize uh, and put that emphasis on uh, case studies, writing and participation in all those competitions, I will reflect on that and it will connect us very much to what is a winning case, right? And it will connect us very much to what the presenters just said of those three winning cases. So I will answer, try to answer those questions through my own perspective, but also reflecting on, uh, on the experiences of this case writing competition and other case writing competition that were organized by Emerald. So first of all, why writing cases? And you can see, I think most of you can be convinced and some students who are connected to this webinar, they would agree definitely with us because here we are shedding their instructors or teachers or scholars perspective but there are students who are the most important stakeholders that we have when we write a case study so definitely we want to make our classroom more engaging so better pedagogy without any issues so lack of cases that we have on the MENA region all those competition and writing of the cases make it very relevant so by fact that you are writing on MENA region is already very attractive uh, influence getting influence you want to create some knowledge base and to, you want to make a difference. You want to make a, a difference in this world of academia through the writing of those case studies, which are based on real facts and events. Exploring the world, this kind of inquisitiveness that all of us should have, it's very important. Um, of course, publication, publish or perish is very important. So getting to publish in those academic journals is important. From my perspective, I did get a lot of opportunities to write cases from my consulting experience and I think one of the case studies particularly the last one kind of got uh, this uh, perspective towards making alliances with people who are real protagonists in their specific situation so that you bring them on board on that person from that company who can from the insider's perspective share exactly right uh, what the juice and that story behind that case and this is really important and obviously getting many opportunities for guest speaking and talking and sharing the perspective why this case is so, so important another thing uh, what can you as a professor as a scholar benefit from that uh, cases are very important for teaching definitely making our classrooms dynamic interactive real and then you share the stories of what happened and how can we learn from that. And students, learners adore engaging with real situation, real protagonists, real things that are going on in real life, not something that they see detached from their reality. Skill variety, and I'll come back to that, but it's really important to be able to, when you write case studies, to dig into, that's one, one of the elements that you'll see and you've seen through presentation is partnership, partnering with students, with other experienced case writers, with people who are real protagonists in the ground, so that you can combine a variety of skills to write a case. It's not easy to write a very engaging story. So you need to tap into the skills of people on the team so that you are able to capitalize on all those skills to be able to write an engaging story. And I'll come with those 40 competencies that any case study, which is well-written, can capitalize on. And this is from the teacher's perspective. And the same thing can happen when students analyze the, ca the case and they read a case. They also can develop those 40 competencies. They come in the next slide. So bear with me just in a second. Those 40 competencies are really uh, fresh from, from the oven. Uh, ideas coming from Harvard Business uh, Review article where you can see exactly how cases connect to that 40s. Um, executive education. 
Uh, it's very important if you have opportunities to deliver some uh, executive uh, seminars or you are involved in some consulting projects. Sometimes the companies themselves whom you deliver those consulting projects are asking you to develop a case study for this client organization. And you can then use that case study for that client organization, but even in your other executive education seminars that you deliver, because it's a higher level audience uh, as compared to undergraduate level of uh, students in university. And you have a different set of challenges and your learning objectives should be much more sophisticated because it has to be commensurate with the level of difficulty that the case poses for the audience. Um, career. Uh, you can get opportunities from my own experience. I, because of my uh, over two decades of involvement in uh, case writing, besides my career in publishing scholarly and academic research in my specific fields and leadership, corporate leadership, corporate governance, family businesses, and all these, I, uh, I did get a, a sabbatical opportunity to teach in a university uh, which is known that it adopted the Harvard uh, Business School style where the teaching of any management course, any uh, course in business, even in finance, is done through case study. So the whole one class is a case study. There is no theory, it is a case, then the theory is reinforced through the case. So uh, because of this, I, uh, of my experience in writing and delivering and then using the case study, I got this opportunity. So don't ignore the possibility of getting all those opportunities in your career. And why not? It's all about fulfillment, fun, sense of accomplishment, a challenge that you get, and obviously the interaction. I was so pleased to see the three winning teams to have a kind of nice collaboration. And even it's a fun process to learn from each other and to come up to deliver this beautiful case study from which everybody can learn. There is always a learning exercise out of that. So from both perspectives, cases and skills, what can we <laughs> capitalize on? We need to tap on uh, those into those four T competencies. You can guess that four T stand for <laughs> competencies which start with letter T. And both case writers, meaning the teacher's perspective or instructor's perspective, and the students, the learners who are using that, definitely are also benefiting from that. So trailblazing. Don't be afraid to be innovative. When you come with a case study, you have an amazing topic. Don't be afraid to be innovative. Trailblazing is always about finding new opportunity, new topic, new trends, and then make it the core and the essence of your case study. It really attracts attention. It really boosts your narrative, the way how you guide through and you walk the reader through your case so that it's exactly like a novel where you will, more the reader reads, more you make that reading intriguing to the audience so that they cannot stop reading it till then. That should be an engaging style of, of presenting the narrative behind your case. Tool making. It's a very important type of skill that is going to be seen very much in your teaching note, more in particular, because that's where you are going to help the learners and particularly instructors who will administer and use the case in their classes to apply different tools, frameworks, concepts, right? Because the case is not written just like that. It is written to reinforce a specific material, concept, theory. So, you should be very clear about the tools, the concepts that you are using through that specific case. Translation, it is, again, a metaphor that is being used for that concept of uh, competency, which is translation competency, meaning that through the discussion, the reality emerges. Through, from the perspective of the teacher, through the link that the teacher makes between the case story and the frameworks, the theories, the concepts, the reality emerges. And from the student perspective, it's through discussion in teams that that company has so many challenges. So what is going to be the outcome? What do we decide? And students exchange. And through that exchange, they translate their knowledge 
of what they learned in the course through theories and they apply it to reality, to the situation that they face through the lens of protagonists in this case. And definitely teamwork. The teamwork, again, from the perspective of the teacher, because the writers are several. The best cases are definitely the ones uh, where you can combine the artistry of writing of several people together, and from the perspective of the students who analyze the cases. So remember, the 40 competencies definitely are one of the tips which are very important in terms of having winning cases in any competition and then to translate that winning case in competition in a published case study which is another set of challenges that you need to address here i'm going to go uh, smoothly but rapidly through that because the key idea that i wanted to present uh, is that any winning case study definitely has to be in mind that we do have the instructor on one side and what makes a case study interesting, compelling, so successful, and a winning case study on the instructor perspective sometimes might not be the same as on the student or the learner's perspective. From our perspective as teachers, definitely we want to reemphasize or reinforce some specific topics, chapters, concepts, and that's very important. So we do need to keep in mind that. We do want our students to learn out of it it's not just to have fun in the class which fun is very important component of our of our learning and teaching but it's not the very essence so uh, it should have a key and core material behind that you do have to think about any additional material that you can make to support your case study and the learning of students from that case and definitely a case that would be quite accessible to students from the student perspective, definitely, it's very important to think about what is that case easy to read. And that's where we sometimes, as the ones who, read the case, who write the case, we forget about the importance of the narrative, the way how we write the case. So the language, how engaging it is for the reader, and how do we really make sure that the student reads the case to them. So interesting to me, nice topics companies I know, something I heard about, and a case which will definitely help me to learn. So what did I learn from that as a student? So if we were to now have really the specific tips on that, do be in mind that for a case study to be successful, you have two components on two sides. One and the first component, remember that we do need to combine the perspectives and kind of marry the two perspectives in a well-written case study, which is likely to win an amazing competition and be published in a lot of different journals and definitely in the Emerald Emerging Markets case studies collection, to combine the perspective of teachers, instructors on one side and students on the other. Be in mind who are the stakeholders of the case, who you address this case to, and definitely are the students who would need to learn. Don't forget also the teachers because you are not going to be the only one to use that case. If your case is published, you want to make it accessible to instructors to use your case and to really use it in their own classes. That's one. The second combination of two things, definitely don't forget. You have the case and you do have the teaching note. So those two are like a married couple have to go together hand in hand and do not have to contradict each other they have to align very much because this is the couple which makes the winning formula so you do have and i'll not go over that but i'll go over the next slide more in details i'm aware of the time so i love to meet my my time uh, uh, specifications so uh this uh, specific editorial criteria where winning case can get published uh, we will have a lot of editorial criteria that we're going to evaluate apart that we have the um uh, peer review process which goes through several rounds right and then you get also support with comments and feedback from the editorial office so you have these really on the website of the um, emerald emerging markets case study here and you can basically see all of those advices right and criteria that we look at so that you can get a nice flare of whether your case has a high likelihood in this stage of development to be published but let me go in this slide, which really is uh, 
one shot and in that one shot i am able to give you really the summary of what makes a winning case right and this is the result of my reflection of so many years of all this uh, case writing teaching uh, judging competition and uh, uh, being there and winning myself several competition in case writing so i said i think that the best way to capture what makes a case study, a successful case study, a winning case study, a case study that students enjoy and instructors enjoy administering in their own classes is uh, something that can be captured through six P's. Six P's of winning cases, right? I would start with the problems. And problems uh, are typically uh, the situations when you would, and we really favor cases of dilemmas, of challenges, of a great issue that you have as a challenge there in the case that will really stimulate a lot of interest and debate. So uh, success stories are fine, but uh, uploading a company through 10, 15 pages of the write-up, it's kind of sometimes even getting a little bit not so interesting and to one extent even boring. What we want is to highlight situations of dilemmas and all the winning cases do have a very clear and very strong opening paragraph which captures that dilemma, that problem, that, that challenge that uh, protagonists in the case have and then this will stimulate really the discussion uh, of, of that specific problem that the case study captures. So problems, don't forget, your case study has to have a dilemma set up front. A second one, plots. And plots is just for convenience that this word is used so that we remember that those are six Ps. But in other words, to say it, don't forget the artistry of writing, the narrative, the story, the flow, the how you present it, the dilemmas inside have to walk. It's like a river of different challenges with stones, sometimes with mountains that protagonists have to go through and it piles up the challenge and another and another so that then boom it's the case is about to explode please solve us because without the solution we cannot really drive the company towards the future so the story has to be there it's very intriguing unusual there are places there are contexts there are situations bring it forward and show that beautiful case Another thing, protagonists, we do need people. People like to empathize with other people. They want to know the key actors, their stories, and they would like to identify with them. We want to have the quotes, the sites from those people to be there, to be cited in the case itself. Paradigm, and this is where we're getting closer to the teaching note, because don't forget that the case is not written just for the fun of it. We do want the teachers to reinforce a specific what? a specific framework, a specific theory, a specific concept. And this comes from the paradigms, theoretical paradigms or theories that you want to reinforce. And this will make the connection between your case and the teaching note and possibilities. The most interesting cases, guys, are not the ones that one <laughs> best way, right? There is a case and then one solution. That's it, there is no other solution. No, the whole thing about the management cases, business cases, it's that you bring that problem there and there are several solutions. And actually the nice cases are even ones which at the end propose even a several, a set of several solutions and then they open up even to other potential solutions. So there might be three, five, six different solutions to that. Let the people in the class deliberate and present their pros and cons to each solution and eventually have a vote on what is the priority and which cases will go, which solution is more likely to be implemented. And the sixth one, which I put here in the middle, is potential. Why? Because here I'm taking the winning case in a competition to the publication. Every single, and definitely, if I want to link this, what I'm telling you here with the three winning cases, I can tell you very well that the three of them have high potential, and that's exactly what we wanted uh, in that competition. Uh, are those cases, when they were submitted, were they ready for publication? No, they were not ready for publication, and they will see the authors, how they go through different rounds of 
peer review process, but that's part of the game. That's part of the process. The most important, did we see the case having a potential? Yes. And this is really important then for reviewers and for editors of a journal to support with very constructive feedback to all those authors, to give this feedback to authors so that the case can be transformed into a published case. So if I say the three uh, cases. Do they have potential? Yes, the three winning cases have potential. If I were to, and I, you allow me to make a linkage between those six P's and again the three winning cases, if I were to give you a word for a specific P on those six P's for each of the cases, I would definitely say the first case the first case, it has a really the one on the cosmetics company. Um, uh, it definitely has um, an award from my side on the paradigm uh, P uh, of the 6P over winning cases. The case uh, uh, teaching note is very well developed and it explains even several aspects of marketing and the stories there. I think five C's of marketing, which is described and different theories inside of, of the teaching note. So faith, first case definitely wins the paradigm P uh, of the competition. The second case of the family business definitely wins the problems P of the 6P of writing uh, winning case studies with a lot of those dilemmas and challenges because they're different challenges and there are a lot of those different challenges and then they are like piling up and making uh, the company even more complex because as the family business evolves more complexity uh, adds up to the family uh, business. And then the last case wins definitely the story, the narrative, the timeliness of it, the plot, so the story in it and how relevant and timely that story is. Right. So for the teaching note, the same thing. You have all those editorial criteria there. But I would like to give you my hints on what is fundamental in a good teaching note. Make sure you do not omit any of the section in a well-written teaching note, right? Because they are fundamental and typical mistakes that we do see that there are some of those which are not there. And this is fundamental when you judge your teaching note. Think whether any person who has no idea about your case, would that person be able to teach your case with the help of your teaching note? So all those elements should be present there. And in particular, don't forget for learning objective on purpose, I projected here. Bloom's taxonomy is, I very commonly give that advice to all the authors which are submitting. Make sure that your learning objectives are commensurate with the level of difficulty of the audience to whom you target your case. And here you have a very comprehensive uh, Bloom's taxonomy of teaching um, and learning objectives that you would like to tackle for your cases. I would like to, given that whole those mistakes you can find, but uh, given that the time is really pressing, I would like to conclude with one final piece of ad advice. Um, how to make your case study a winning case study. Definitely writing style is important. Um, Important proofreading. We do not like, and reviewers are really get, uh, getting quite upset if the case is not really readable. So it's very important to have already a well-written piece, right? And a very nice, engaging writing style. Catchy focus. So topical, timely, things that are recent, real companies, real stories. Write problem-based case studies because from there we can really deliberate on potential solutions so that students can develop their decision-making skills. Advice, pre-test your case study in the class before submitting to any competition and even for publication because you get very useful feedback from students themselves. Make sure to keep a connection between the case and teaching note. It is fundamental that those two are aligned, that your note is based on what the case says, and the case is then having sufficient information so that students are able to answer the questions that you propose to them. Develop your teaching note. It's fundamental, but really teaching note is double or triple in size and length than your case study. So don't ignore the importance of the teaching note. And definitely strive to improve. Participate in any webinar that is offered there, like this one. Participate in case writing workshops where you can get a very useful feedback and strive to always improve and be better and better. I really wish you the very best and a lot of wins in future competition. And I hope uh, this webinar was useful to you.
Thanks a lot and good luck. Nadine, over to you. Yes, uh, it's Angie. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Virginia, for this useful and very insightful presentation. I'm sure it was of great value to everyone. Uh, we're just running out of time, so I will share just a couple of the questions that we have received from our audience. Uh, the first one, it asks about how do you come up usually with assignment questions that you include in the teaching notes? <laughs> very good question, and I'll be, again, I, I'm aware I'm very fast on that. Um, you know, like uh, when you write your thesis sometimes in a PhD, so my colleagues will, allude, will, will, uh, will connect to that. Uh, sometimes you don't do your proposal until you know the final outcomes of your uh, thesis. The same here. Sometimes your case starts from the teaching notes because you really want to know exactly what kind of theories, what kind of challenges, what kind of questions you would like your students to learn. And then many times, like the case study on family business, for instance, you have a course and you have something in that course, for instance, ownership dilemma and succession from generation one, from the founder to the second generation. So what are the typical dilemmas that emerge? Succession, primogenitory type of things when we typically in the Middle East, particularly we give uh, the transition to uh, the uh, firstborn son typically, right? And you know all those typical issues that occur. So you say, I want the case study which will tackle those issues the challenge of succession, the challenge of um, dynamics between the family members, the fact that family members do marry and create a second, third, and extended family. So how all these dynamics are there? So the, the questions do come from your understanding, and that's why you see how this pairing of teaching notes and case study goes hands in hands. You have to know why do you write? You don't just sit and okay, I'm gonna write a case study. You have to know what exactly is the purpose of that case study. And it goes through the alignment of your learning objective. Maybe I'll give you a very quick tip. If you have the learning objective and it is very clear in that learning, I want my student to develop this. I want, and I showed you that Bloom, uh, Bloom's uh, uh, methodology. So already each of those learning objectives should result in a very specific question that you are going to provide a sample answer in. Next, <laughs> I'll do fast okay. to answer as many as possible. Yes, the second question, uh, I think you have already uh, spoke about this briefly. Uh, how do cases get peer reviewed? Do they uh -huh. have to? Yes, yes. Uh, and how long does it usually take? And sometimes it takes longer than expected. So if you okay. could just shed the light on this area, please. Very long, and it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. So first of all, I would like, as an author and as an editor, I would like to tell to all of you, we are all in the same boat. So unfortunately, because of the pandemic, you, uh, you, you might uh, really uh, align with my perspective on that. I do have my papers on the peer review, and I have. Uh, revised versions which are already eight months in the process and still the reviewers do not respond. So it's a huge challenge in the academic world and we struggle both as editors and as um, uh, scholars. What is very important to know that to be ourselves responsive and to do that service. So how the cases get peer reviewed? Typically you submit the case to a journal it goes through first to the editorial office and you are gonna have editorial assistant who screens rapidly because we did have um, that issue and please be uh, mindful of that thing that our cases are always um, uh, peer reviewed anonymously. So what does it mean? The reviewers do not know the identity of their authors and the authors do not know the identity of the reviewers, so it's anonymous process. So we did have situation when the authors put their names in the teaching note, for instance. So in the first step, the editorial assistant checks that there is general compliance. Then it goes to um, editor in chief. Editor in chief assigns that to a different uh, associate editor, and that associate editor has a primary look on the case. And if uh, really, the language, there are a lot of mistakes, there are no, a lot of sections missing. So the associate editor has the right to, for instance, unsubmit the case and say, please do this and this and that, because reviewers will reject the case and you don't want that. You want to get this constructive feedback. 
If not, the associated sends an uh, invitation to several anonymous peer reviewers and wait for their response. And typically we have to wait at least two weeks for those to accept. If they don't accept, we resend the invitation. So just to, under for also to understand why it takes so long. Because some people on the other end are not just are not responding. So what the, then the journal uh, associate editor, editors are doing, resending the invitation and it takes another two weeks. And then there are some who do say, yes, we commit. So they get one month to review. But before the expiry of the deadline, what they say, I'm sorry, something happened in this and that, we cannot. And we are aware of the challenges of life, particularly in this situation. So that's why it takes longer, guys. And sometimes, yes, it can take a year, it can take two. Uh, in my situations, it took even three years, guys. And this is the challenge. So be with yeah. us. And it can be five rounds. And I think Admiral has an amazing resource where I think I shared together with one author how one of the authors went through five different rounds but his case was nowhere close to what he submitted, to what he ended up. It was a spectacular case, which at the beginning had to be actually rejected, but thanks to very constructive guidance and the commitment of the author to want to comply with this guidance, the case got published very successfully. So this is a piece of advice that I would like to give to all authors. Try and commit to that, because if you get a constructive feedback, it means that there is potential. So just work on that and your case will be published. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Virginia. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for attending this webinar. Congratulations again to all of the winners of uh, Emerald KCC 2020 competition. And please, as Nadine has announced earlier, stay tuned for more announcements and upcoming details about our upcoming competition for Emerald KCC 2021 competition. We'll be sending you shortly all the details, the timeline, and uh, we're looking forward to more and more submissions from our region and uh, to be covering different business areas. And we're looking forward to that. Thank you again and hope you found this webinar useful and insightful to you. Thank you so much for your time. Have a good day. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Angie. Thank you very much from Emerald and from uh, AUC. And once again, uh, hugest congratulations ever to the winning cases. And to all people, please do submit your cases for the next competition. All the best. Thank you so much, Dr. Virginia. Thank you, everyone.